Hello, welcome to the Daily News Ukraine channel. Today is February 9th and our daily review of news about Ukraine. Rescuers of a combined squad of the State Emergency Service of Ukraine, who arrived in Turkey to help tackle the aftermath of a powerful earthquake, set up a tent camp the Dogenkoy district of Antakya City, Hatay province. On the night of February 9th, Rescuers of a combined squad of the State Emergency Service set up a tent camp in the Dogenkoy district of Antakya City, Hatay Province, the State Emergency Service wrote on Facebook. It is noted that based on the results of a briefing with the coordination headquarters, the area of emergency and rescue operations was determined. Read also, first group of Ukrainian rescuers arrives in Turkey as reported by Ukrainform on February 8. The first group of the combined squad of the State Emergency Service arrived at the Gaziantep airport in Turkey to help eliminate the aftermath of a powerful earthquake. I. Soldiers of the 45th Separate Artillery Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine successfully destroyed the artillery of Russian invaders near Soldar, Donetsk region. The 45th Separate Artillery Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine said this in a post on Facebook, Ukraineform reports. Soldar, The Last Dance, Mstabi, IFE, and D20. A vivid example of graceful movements and a balanced pace, the report says. The 45th Separate Artillery Brigade, established in 2014 as part of the Reserve Corps, is a missile and artillery unit of the ground forces of the armed forces of Ukraine. Its place of temporary base is Yavorov, Lviv region. Read also, Ukrainian military destroy Russia's BMPT Terminator near Kremina since the Russian full-scale invasion began, the brigade and its divisions heroically defended Kiev, Zaporizhia, Dnipropetrovsk, and Kharkiv regions, and inflicted losses on the enemy in Donetsk, Luhansk, and Kherson regions. I. Ukrainian defenders have destroyed Russia's tank support fighting vehicle, BMPT Terminator, near the Luhansk region's Kremina. The relevant statement was made by Luhansk Regional Military Administration head Seriai Haidai on Telegram and Ukraineform correspondent reports. Script async src equals https forward slash forward slash telegram dot org slash js slash telegram widget dot js 21 data telegram post equals serhi underscore heyday slash 9361 data width equals 100% slash script high dimensioned that Russian TV propagandists had recently boasted of Terminator BMPT, which is allegedly impossible to get destroyed. High Dai posted the photographs of the destroyed BMPT Terminator vehicle. He also added a Russian propagandist video showing that very vehicle and its crew before they were destroyed by Luhansk defenders. A reminder that, on February 8, 2023, Ukraine's defense forces repelled enemy attacks near 19 settlements in the Luhansk, Donetsk, and Zaporizhia regions. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has arrived in Brussels, and Ukraineform correspondent reports. The head of state is expected to start his visit with an address at a special session of the European Parliament. After that, Zelensky will attend a special meeting of the European Council where the first item on the agenda will be providing assistance to Ukraine in its struggle against Russian aggression. Additional security measures have been taken in Brussels, which are usually applied during high-level meetings between European leaders. A reminder that, on February 8, 2023, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky paid a visit to the United Kingdom. In the evening of February 8, 2023, he arrived in France and met with Chancellor of Germany Olaf Scholz and President of the French Republic Emmanuel Macron in Paris. Photo, twitter.com slash It is important for Ukraine to cooperate with French companies in terms of the restoration of its energy sector. The relevant statement was made by Ukrainian Energy Minister German Galishchenko during a meeting with the representatives of the Movement of the Enterprises of France, MEDEF, and Ukraineform correspondent reports, referring to the Ukrainian Energy Ministry. The parties discussed the areas of cooperation and projects related to the restoration of Ukraine's energy sector. Galishchenko called on French businesses to invest in Ukraine's energy restoration so as to start actively implementing relevant projects the next day after Ukraine's victory over Russia. 
In addition, Galashchenko thanked the government of France and French businesses for the humanitarian aid provided to Ukraine's energy sector. A reminder that France sent 20 humanitarian aid shipments for Ukraine's energy sector, totaling more than 168 tons. At a meeting with Chancellor of Germany Olaf Scholz and President of the French Republic Emmanuel Macron, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky reiterated Ukraine's demand for heavy weapons and combat aircraft. The relevant statement was made by BILD and Ukrainform correspondent reports. France and Germany have the potential to turn the tide, and that's how I see our talks today. The sooner we get long-range heavy weapons and our pilots get modern planes, the sooner Russian aggression will end, Zelensky said at a late dinner meeting with Scholz and Macron in Paris on Wednesday. Macron reiterated that Russia must not win this war and that both Paris and Berlin will provide military support to Ukraine for as long as necessary. Meanwhile, Scholz noted that Ukraine belongs to the European family, and the EU summit will send a strong signal of solidarity with Kiev. He also promised to provide military, humanitarian and financial aid to Ukraine for as long as necessary. A reminder that three leaders will meet again at a EU summit in Brussels today. Photo, Office of the President of Ukraine On February 8, 2023, Russian troops were attacking the Donetsk region's settlements with missiles and artillery. The relevant statement was made by Donetsk Regional Military Administration head Pavlo Kirilenko on Facebook and Ukraineform correspondent reports. Around midnight, Russians shelled the Hrodivka community, which is located relatively far from the front line, with artillery. In Novoekonomik, one person was injured and a church was hit, the report states. The outskirts of Kramatorsk came under enemy fire. Enemy projectiles struck the area of an industrial enterprise. In the Volnavaka direction, two houses were damaged in the Volodar community's Bohoyavlenka. The enemy missile also hit a building in Bahadur. The Kurikov community came under enemy fire five times. Novoselodov suffered the most, a kindergarten, outpatient department, family leisure hub, residential house and enterprise were damaged there. The outskirts of Kurikov and Trudov were also affected. No casualties were reported. In the Horlivka direction, Russian invaders launched a missile strike on Koshchentanivka and twice attacked Ivanopilia with artillery. A house and a warehouse facility were damaged. In New York, a nine-story apartment block was hit. In the Lysikansk direction, a two-story residential house was damaged in Siversk. No casualties were reported. Photo, Pavlo Kirilenko, Facebook. On February 8, 2023, Russian troops attacked the Kherson region 39 times. As a result, three civilians were killed and four injured. The relevant statement was made by Kherson Regional Military Administration on Telegram and Ukraine Forum correspondent reports. Over the past day, three civilians have been killed in Russia's shelling of the Kherson region. For local residents received injuries of various severity levels, the report states. A 15-year-old boy is among those injured. He suffered a mild concussion. According to Kherson Regional Military Administration, Russian troops used artillery, multiple launch rocket systems, MLRS, and mortars. In particular, the enemy attacked the city of Kherson six times. Russian projectiles hit a children's rehabilitation center and residential houses. On February 8, 2023, at least 23 settlements came under enemy fire in the Kharkiv region. In particular, Russian troops used combat aircraft near Kotlyarivka and Tabivka. The relevant statement was made by Kharkiv Regional Military Administration head Ola Sini Hubov on Telegram and Ukraineform correspondent reports. Over the past day, the enemy has been massively shelling border settlements in such districts as Chuiv, Kupiansk, and Kharkiv. At least 23 settlements came under enemy fire. Near Kotlyarivka and Tabivka, the enemy used combat aircraft, Sini Hubov wrote. Five civilians were injured in Russia's shelling of the Chuiv district, including one child. In Bovchansk, apartment blocks and detached houses were damaged. Fires broke out. 
A building of the unit of the Ukrainian State Emergency Service was damaged. Two civilians were killed in Russia's shelling of the Kupiansk district Tverikna. Detached houses were damaged in Kupiansk. Demoning efforts are underway in the Kharkiv region. Over the past day, the explosives experts of the Ukrainian State Emergency Service have neutralized 25 dangerous objects. Photo, illustrative. The weather continues to play a significant role in the course of Russia's war in Ukraine. With the ground frozen, there has likely been little change in cross-country mobility, CCM, conditions in eastern Ukraine in recent weeks. The relevant statement was made by the Ministry of Defense of the United Kingdom on Twitter, referring to the latest defense intelligence update and Ukraineform correspondent reports. According to the UK intelligence, on February 8, 2023, surface temperatures were around 0 degrees Celsius. Over the coming week, forecasts suggest soil temperature increases and snow melt are likely to deteriorate CCM across the Donbass. The UK intelligence expects that CCM is likely to be at its worst, with extremely muddy conditions, over mid to late March. Thus, commanders on both sides will highly likely seek to avoid scheduling major offensives at such times. However, perceived political or operational opportunities can override such concerns, as demonstrated by Russia launching its invasion in late February 2022, the UK intelligence noted. Today we were talking about those news. Ukrainian rescuers set up tent city in Turkey's Antakya. Ukrainian soldiers destroy enemies to be, IFE, and Howitzer near Soldar. Ukrainian military destroy Russia's BMPT Terminator near Kremina. President Zelensky arrives in Brussels. Minister Galashchenko urges French businesses to invest in Ukraine's energy restoration. Zelensky calls on Scholz, Macron to provide fighter jets to Ukraine. Russian attacks cause damage to church, kindergarten, houses in Donetsk region. Three civilians killed in Russia's shelling of Kherson region. 23 settlements come under enemy fire in Kharkiv region. UK intelligence outlines role of weather in the course of Russia's war in Ukraine.